Hey guys, uh, welcome to Moose's Machinery and Merry Christmas. I thought one thing we should talk about today is surface grinder tooling and projects you can do on a surface grinder should you own one. Now, in my personal opinion, a surface grinder is really one of the last machines you should add to your shop as a hobbyist or as a professional. Uh, it's really a value added tool, but it's not strictly necessary to do the vast majority of jobs, especially as a hobbyist. Now, for me, a surface grinder really just speeds up a lot of my projects. It's not strictly necessary to do a lot of my projects. And most of the stuff I do on a surface grinder, I can also do on a bench grinder or on the mill. However, a surface grinder really does bring in a layer of capabilities you may not truly be able to get other places. Um, when it comes to real precision tooling, I am unaware of other options on a milling machine that you really can do on, or that you can do on a milling machine that you can also do on a surface grinder. When you want to work in ten thousandths of an inch, it's very difficult on a surface on a milling machine, but it's relatively straightforward on a surface grinder. And I'm just going to, you know, in front of the camera, we'll show a few things I've made on the surface grinder and we'll, we'll get into the other tooling that's actually on the bench. But I think really the first tool you need um, for a surface grinder is a wrench like this. This is for loosening and tightening your wheel arbors. And I would not recommend doing it with the punch. Um, these wheels are delicate and expensive. So this is a cup wheel that needs to get pressed. Oops, sorry guys. You see how this is completely loaded. Um, this is a really open 46 grit wheel, so it looks worse than it is. But a cup wheel is for grinding the face of parts. So if this, let's grab something. So if I had this, um, basically, I, I think box parallel is the best way to put it. They're not really one, two, three blocks. If I wanted to grind the vertical face like this, I'd need, I'd need a cup wheel. Uh, there are ways you can dress a normal straight wheel uh, to sort of act as a facsimile or substitute for a cup wheel, but I would not recommend doing that, typically speaking. Uh, I think that that generates um, a safety issue. There's an extreme risk, risk of the wheel shattering or exploding. I do not recommend doing it for uh, anyone who's inexperienced on a surface grinder. And another tool you'll really need to get started, if you have multiple arbors and they allow you to use this, this is what's called an arbor puller. So I think this is, I forget the model of it. Um, they're actually available on Amazon. I will look it up if you're looking for one, but it's a half by 20 right hand. And these are all right hand threads. So this seats on a taper um, on the machine, like so it, it seats on there. And this just threads in and acts as a puller, so you can remove these mounted and balanced. And I, I just do that for convenience to say, um, 90 something percent of my grinding is basically a Norton 38A equivalent. I use a CGW camel wheel. Um, I've actually gotten away from the Nortons because if you see this discoloration, I think they're injected with something to balance them. Now, part of that too is this wheel has been sitting, but I'm not overly fond of these. I don't think they're as good a quality wheel as the Camel, um, at least for the price. These are about 40 to $50, and the Camel wheels are about 25 to 30. I'm just much happier with the price to performance of a Camel wheel. Um, and this is a pretty standard, bog standard, uh, sort of medium all around grit. Now this here is a really open dress ruby wheel. So this particular wheel here is really for um, particularly hard materials like tool steel. I don't know if it comes through on camera, but this is a much more open grain structure. These run cooler. Um, these aren't ideal for heavy material removal, but no wheel is an all around uh, best performer. You, you really pick and choose what characteristics you want. Now, I do have an all-around wheel on my grinder because typically I'm only taking off one to two thousandths of an inch. So for me, a really high-performance specialized wheel doesn't make sense because, again, I'm not a high-performance specialized shop in the grinding department. 
Uh, and one more thing is I do have a quarter inch wheel and you'll see how quickly this loads. So um, with a wheel like this on my machine, grinding this amount of surface here would actually require dressing this wheel, cleaning it up because it just loads so quickly. So this is an 80 grit wheel. This is a very closed structure. Um, this is not a type of wheel I use very often and I'm, I, I'm probably going to pull this off the arbor and put my Ruby wheel on because I just use that one more. Uh, even an 80, a 46 grit wheel, I will show you what a 46 grit surface grinder finish looks like and that's this. So this is a 46 grit surface grinder finish and these scratches in here from handling it, this is a very good finish. Um, I just can't justify a finer wheel. And I've done these in my hand before, but they don't need to be very tight. You see, they can just come right apart. These are left-hand thread usually. I think this one's a right-hand thread. It depends a lot on your arbor. You can get them from a lot of different manufacturers, but you do need these metal washers in here. Um, a wheel exploding is a very scary experience. It has happened to me once, and I hope it never happens again. Uh, I really, it was, it, it just, they're, they're scary. There's a lot of energy stored up. You have to think of these as flywheels. Um, and it's just overall not a good experience, but I just don't go crazy tightening wheels down. Um, I think, if you're running a higher powered grinder than I am, you know, mine are only three quarters of a horsepower and we'll need to dress that wheel. So these are not balancing arbors. Um, I typically don't balance wheels and still get a very good finish on them, but that comes back to a combination of experience and careful dressing. Like you don't just dress the face of a wheel, dress the sides. We'll do a whole separate video on wheel dressing and an explanation. And we'll probably dress this Ruby wheel together. I, I think that would be a fun project. But back to just the tooling. Now really the sky is the limit. So this fixture here is probably one of the first fixtures I think a new person would buy. And this is for sharpening end mills. Uh, let me grab an end mill that I have sharpened. And again, guys, I'm not great at sharpening end mills. So I'm not a... Uh, tool and cutter grinder hand, I'm not very good at it. And with this thing here, I haven't found a good way to cut the gash in the end mill. So what I wind up doing is I just, I, I leave a little nubbins in the center just because of the way I have to grind. And I just come in with a Dremel with a diamond wheel and, and cut it. This will leave a good finish. I mean, you've, you guys have all seen me use end mills I sharpen here on video. Uh, the majority of material I remove is with resharpened end mills because it's just cost effective if you chip them. Um, I think a poorly sharpened end mill is certainly better than a dull end mill. So these are great. Um, I bought this one on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description for any stuff that's available on Amazon that I know is of reasonable quality or at least serviceable. Um, these inexpensive spin dexters are really nice so you can use these multiple ways now you can use it um, basically it's just a spin fixture where if you're grinding a shaft which is something i do but you can also use it as an indexing fixture so you have um, basically 360 combinations of holes so you have 36 holes on the face at 10 degree increments and then you have these 10 holes here and, and it functions like a vernier scale. Um, unfortunately with these, they do collect a lot of grinding grit in the bearing area. So I tend to pull these apart before and after using them um, just for lifetime sake. But also uh, if you loosen this shaft here, you see how you have end play. If you move this collar back here, you can use these to sharpen the flutes on an end mill. Uh, I don't typically do that. Uh, it's certainly something we can investigate together, but you know, it, I don't think it's worth it at that point to me to invest that much time in sharpening end mills. Um, you don't get really good results on this. You can only take a very small, for lack of a better term, lick. And I 
I, I think that um, sharpening the sides of end mills isn't worth it. Sharpening corners, because you burn the corners off, that's mostly where end mills go dull. So a few licks on the surface grinder to bring it back. I'll do that once or twice on an end mill before I toss them. So these are really good. Uh, you can use them for grinding punches. I don't have anything handy that I've ground on here, but if I ever get around to making a rotary brooch, this is the tool I'll use to sharpen my brooches. So we'll get off that subject. Um, these V blocks I've reground. Um, if you're like me, you're eventually going to run into a setup, and these are like $18 inexpensive V blocks. I'm not afraid of hitting them with an end mill. And they're relatively soft, so carbide will survive cutting into these. Um, so I was in a situation where it was easier to cut the V blocks than it was to take an hour and figure out an alternative solution because 20 minutes on a surface grinder and these cleaned up and you can't ever tell they were cut. Um, making your own setup fixture blocks is certainly something you can do on a surface grinder. I think that's a really valuable tool, um, precision fixturing. And also speaking of precision fixturing, so this is a squareness comparator and this is a surface uh, uh, cylinder square. So this cylinder square is ground to within about one and a half, ten thousandths of an inch of squareness at full height, which I'm very satisfied with. Um, for this shop, that's effectively perfect. And my cylinder uh, squareness comparator is great. I ground the surfaces on this and I gave it a quick once over with rust blue because I really like it. it. It it kind of looks like some of the older Steric tools where they've been color case hardened. And last but not least, so this is my um, micrometer stand, this here. This tool has been ground on all surfaces with that same 46 grit wheel I was telling you guys about. So you just don't need a super fine grit wheel to get very fine finishes because a closed dress wheel um, so a closed versus an open dress is really how fast you drag the diamond dresser over it. So a closed dress would be, um, you take a slower pass and I like to go back over it to knock all the loose stuff off and then one more spring pass. You, you can get a very, very good finish with it. Uh, you don't need 80 or 100 grit wheels on a surface grinder. Like 30 to 46 grit is a real sweet spot for the majority of work. And you also have to think, guys, um, so when I grind, because I don't have heat or um, any heat control on the grinder, I'll usually be taking a two to three thousandths depth of cut maximum and a five to thirty thousandths of an inch step over. So if I'm actually taking a five thousandths of an inch step over, I'm doing all of my cutting with a single grain on the wheel because my step over is smaller than the particle size of my abrasive. Kind of wild. So you don't need as fine a, uh, a grit as you think. You just need to be good with the grit you have and understand the limitations of the machine. Now, kind of my last, this is one of the first fixtures I ever made for the surface grinder. This here is for sharpening brazed carbide lathe tools. I will show you how in a moment. So this is how we get some of our side and positive break on it. So this is set up right now to sharpen a left hand tool. Um, and I have a right hand tool in here, but this is how we get our positive rake this way on the tool and our side rake this way. Um, we can't really grind our clearance in. That's what a bench grinder is for. But this is what I'm talking about when I say that a lot of the stuff that happens on this surface grinder could happen on a bench grinder. There's really no reason you can't sharpen your braised carbide tool bits on a bench grinder. But uh, with a protractor and some care, I can get very repeatable results with this fixture, as ugly as it is. And it's also, frankly, a little bit more convenient, guys, just because sometimes you just don't want to work that hard when you're sharpening tools. You just kind of want to listen to your music and, and do your thing. And for me, I'm not at that point sharpening lathe tools on the bench grinder. So I still use my surface grinder sometimes for that. And last but not least, this is just something I like to show in every video involving hazards like this is where a respirator. Um, 
These are P100 filters. I think that they're really important to have and keep you safe from all of the grinding swarf. Um, if you're grinding carbide, the silicon carbide wheels you have are extremely bad for you. There's severe lung and respiratory hazards. Just be safe, take care of yourselves. You know, if you're doing this for a hobby or for business, spend the extra few minutes to just wear your PPE. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this inspires some of you to get out in your shops. You don't need to have fancy tools like this. You know, and to a lot of people, these are pretty stone simple, bare minimum tools. And to me, they're luxury items. So it's all a matter of perspective, guys. Don't get lost in the tools, it's the tool maker.